Hi, and welcome to the Table website. My name is Nathan Hill. I'm glad you're checking us out today. I'm uh, one of the ministers at East Dallas Christian Church. I work with the Table, which is our community here at East Dallas, our new missional community. And we're joined with one of our members of our church, John Ogren, who is a PhD student at Luther uh, Seminary That's right. in beautiful Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, but I just was thinking about it, uh, having this conversation with John, because he's doing some really cool stuff for his, for his sort of uh, final project uh, for his PhD. And I wanted him to kind of share that with us and what kind of insights it offers as, as a way of being church and doing church today. So John, just, just tell us something about the project you've been working on with this church in, in Kansas and as much as you'd like to share. Sure, so um, I'm working with new congregations and um, I'm particularly interested in how as a new congregation is forming, how that congregation learns and how that congregation sees God working around them. And so the research is focused on how the church planners engage, listen, and learn with their neighbors. And so there's, there's some assumptions that go into that, of course, but that's what it's about. So listening to neighbors, so, uh, to give a sense of perspective, do you think uh, lots of new churches um, or uh, do new churches listen to their neighbors? When there's a church that hey, we want to start in this community, um, do you think there's a lot that have not listened to their neighbors? Is that a new concept, do you think? Or? Well, I think inevitably church planners get drawn into dialogue and they get um, they get involved in people's lives and they and they listen and learn. And, and when people come into a congregation, they inevitably shape it. They bring their stuff, they bring their perspectives and so I think that happens, but I don't think that the listening is always necessarily so much a, an intentional part on the front end. We want church plans to succeed, so we put a lot of emphasis on strategy, planning, working stuff out. And so unfortunately, a lot of times, church planters get in there and they've got their theology all worked out, their values and purpose and strategy and everything ready to go, and then it's... Uh, when you do it that way, you, you end up just more trying to attract people to what you already have than co-author or co-create something new um, with the people who are in that context. That's really cool. But, but I mean, I, I didn't grow up in a kind of this concept of, a, of God. Um, and I grew up in a small church that where you would use words like collaborate or even partner with God. I mean, some of us have this sense of God is sort of this immovable force that's on this direction and we're just supposed to jump on board or, or uh, you know, just do what God says. But, so what does that really mean? Can we really collaborate with God? Well, that's a great question. And I'm glad that you, that you see God and our, the way we imagine God as implicated in this because I think it really is in powerful ways. So for me, um, this particular orientation in church planting and in church life um, comes out of a view of the gospel and how God is revealed in the gospel. And for me, um, that centers on Jesus Christ and um, church planters, Christians, ministers, we have a particular identity because we belong to Jesus. And so our identity is as particular as his death on the cross. But our identity also, because Jesus is raised from the dead and lives and leads and works in the world today, is, is radically open in the form of God's promise to every other living being. And so I think that kind of radical particularity and that radical openness set us up for fruitful dialogue. And if God really is at work in the world before we get there, and God is uh, a force um, to, uh, to, to remake the world, um, that's his promise, to make all things new. But um, then we can learn from those who are in the world, and we can um, learn about, I mean, 
a lot of times church planners will do cultural analysis, right? And so they'll want to find out, well, how do people think about God? What are their values? Um, but for me, the theological discernment and the cultural analysis are one and the same. And so, so we can actually have theological conversation with people because the gospel is open to them and comes to them in the midst of their narratives, their circumstances, their experiences. And we actually will learn something of what the gospel is from them. Okay, that's, that's, that's pretty darn cool. What, what implication then does that have for church in the, in the longer term? I mean, because this isn't, this isn't something that is just for new churches. I mean, in a sense, that could be, you know, how do we go and, and how does an existing church go and, and relearn stories and listen to the stories of, of their community? Yeah, so this, um, this whole orientation actually, um, in terms of where I come into it, comes out of a tradition that has been working um, to renew existing congregations um, in missional life. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things that happens uh, in that process is um, congregations are encouraged, first of all, to learn to listen to each other, and discover what the life of God is creating in a congregation, and then it encourages those congregations to learn to listen to the people around them. And, and it really is on the faith that God is at work in the world before we get there. And that we can learn about this if we are, are listening and dialoguing with other people. So I think it's never too late for a congregation, if a, if a congregation has become sort of withdrawn or, or focused internally, to, to turn outward and to start to really attend to what, what's going on. Not just as a strategy of building relationships or a technique for um, you know, winning people over, but as a genuine, radical openness to how a God who creates anew is working in God's world. And the church, of course, has a really special place in God's work in the world. But it always has the pattern of Jesus, a pattern of dying and rising. And I think, I think part of the church's death is always, part of the church's cross is always in the unlearning of listening of having to be remolded, remade, and that comes about in the face of the other, in the interaction with the other, in the difference and challenge that they bring to us. That's a gift, I believe. That's the spirit that's working there. Um, and then God is able to create something new out of the tension of that. And, um, you know, ultimately, we, we want to see people come to follow Jesus. Um, but I think that that invitation, I think that that way of life has to begin in conversation and dialogue. And so, um, yeah. That's, that's, that's beautiful. I mean, I, I, mean I, I think, and it maybe echoes for your story, my story, but like, the, the times that I have felt uh, most welcome in a church were not the times where I felt, you know, pushed into a box, for instance, or said, oh, this is going to be your story to the faith. And this is going to be the way you pray and the way you believe and the way you wrestle with scripture or the way you serve others or love people. It's just it's those times actually when people have sort of given me that openness, that open space of saying, hey, join us and and go. Go as the Spirit moves you. You know, there's a sense of creativity and freedom there. Yeah, and I think the church has a calling to teach and a calling to um, share its, the wealth of um, it, its wisdom that scripture has and the tradition holds and the liturgy holds. But I think you're right, these are such powerful resources that they can, you know, sort of diminish space for people. And so it's not that we put those to the side, we carry all of that with us. But um, being, being in another space, and then um, coming in the posture, the neighbors in my research process, is anyone who is responsive to a request for help. So what the, church, what the church planners are doing in this process is they're actually going to people and saying, will you help us imagine what God is up to in this city? Will you help us discern what this church will be in relation to what God is doing? Well, that, that gives so much space and openness to something new. Um, and it also gives incredible dignity 
to people um, that they have that they already have a voice in this new creation that God is is bringing. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. So just thanks thanks for joining us for this conversation. Um, we hope this might spur some uh, conversation with you if you're watching this. If you want to respond, shoot us a comment, do your own video. And as you're wrapping this up, but one of the things okay. I want to say real quick is that one of the things that I love about the table is the way that it enacts this liturgically. So there's places in the worship where we get to respond, where we get to have a say. And there's um, places in the worship where we sing the Beatles or you know, uh, Louis Armstrong or something, and, and it brings a voice of God's world into the very midst of, of our life of worship. And I think that really um, enacts the same kind of um, instinct. And I think it's welcoming to people who come into the table and experience that. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, uh, I want to see us grow in that kind of posture, you know. That's cool. And so, so, as we, as we wrap up with, with, with that good comment too, if, if you're looking for a community like that, you're checking us out on the web, um, uh, these are some of the things that we are wrestling with and, and looking and to collaborate with God. We recognize that God is already at work in our neighborhood and in Dallas, and, and we just want to, we want to join in with that, and, and we want to partner with God and what God is already doing, rather than always creating things or barging in with our own ideas. Um, but it's a uh, interesting process, and uh, um, we're inviting anyone who's interested to kind of to join in and, and experiment with us. That's right, and you'll have something important to contribute yeah. when you come. All right. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. Hope this conversation moved you in some direction, and uh, see you next time. Stay tuned. Bye. Awesome. Peace.